Ahead of each year's Royal Rumble event, WWE runs a by the numbers, by the numbers video. We all know how it goes by now. <coughs> Two wrestlers enter. Both feet hit the floor. Remember that time they gave the big lads a lift to the ring? Main event of WrestleMania. Santino Morella lasting as long as I do in the bedroom. Legends like Ric Flair, Shawn Michaels, and Mantar. Yeah, this may come as a bit of a surprise to you, but WWE sometimes neglects to mention numbers that would put them in a bad light. And so myself and Michael Sidgwick, with a tear in our eyes, have pulled them together just for you ahead of one of the most fun nights in the pay-per-view calendar, because sometimes the Royal Rumble can be a bit crap. More often than not this decade, I mean, Dolph Ziggler, number 30. <sighs> I'm Adam Wilborn from What Culture, and this is the Royal Rumble by the numbers WWE don't want you to know. Number 10, six. Six is the total number of total jobbers eliminated by Shawn Michaels at the 1995 edition of the Royal Rumble. You know, the one where he made the British Bulldog look like a bit of a twat. His performance in it is canonized in WWE lore as this incredible feat of stamina and athleticism and toughness, whereas in reality, he only lasted just over 38 minutes and he outlasted a field thinner than his excuses in Montreal. Now let's see, there was Duke Drozzi, Tom Pritchard, Bushwhacker Luke, Jacob Blue, Bushwhacker Butch, and Aldo Montoya. You didn't even get to bloody eliminate Mantar. To be fair, this reads as unimpressive, but this was WWF using minimal resources to make a star. Remember when that was a thing? Number nine, 10 minutes and 36 seconds. To put into perspective just how little WWE thought of Daniel Bryan in 2015, by the way, the man whose non-appearance in the previous year's Royal Rumble match set into motion an embarrassing mea culpa on the part of management and made people boo Rey Mysterio, it's like punching a puppy. Just consider the luminaries that entered longer stints in Royal Rumbles of yore. Tag Team Journeyman 8-Ball in 1998 lasted 30 minutes and 43 seconds. Rhino in 2004 lasted 14 minutes, and just a few months prior to that, Vince had strutted out on a house show and literally told him to stop wrestling because he was bored shitless. Stardust lasted 2 minutes and 13 seconds longer than Brian in the same rumble. I wonder what he's up to nowadays. 10 minutes and 36 seconds is the time taken to completely annihilate fan relations. Granted, it's not as memorable as 18 seconds, but it's still as damnable. Number eight, 50. 50 was the amount of minutes Channel 4 tape delayed its broadcast of Backlash in the United Kingdom following the, let's just say, tumultuous fallout of Royal Rumble 2000. The partnership between the WWF and the UK broadcaster was a major get, and the sports entertainment empire could have used it as a launch pad for something very exciting on these aisles. That didn't happen though. That didn't happen because of the sight of Mae Young's prosthetic dog ears and the rampant levels of violence and gore. It revolted the station. And this is Channel 4 we're talking about. They took the immediate decision to end the relationship, censored future contractually obligated pay-per-view broadcasts, and relegated Heat to a late-night death slot. I hope you're happy, Jerry Lawler. Your love of poppies will end us all. Number seven, 18 minutes and 14 seconds. Look, Scott Steiner is many things. He's an off-the-chart athlete, a ring gear fashionista, a genuine innovator, an unhinged madman, a real-life hard case, even a maths whiz. But he was never boring until January 2003. Triple H portrayed him as boring and past it in a deeply unflattering match. In the interest of stringent research, I re-watched this match in its entirety. Well, at least that was the plan until Scott Steiner threw the 43rd worked punch in the opening four minutes. I'm sorry, lads. That was too much even for me. 
It turns out 18 minutes and 14 seconds is the exact time it takes to measure one's penis. A triple H. Number six, two. Two is the paltry number of wrestlers Chris Jericho eliminated en route to fashioning himself as the Royal Rumble's ultimate aggregated Iron Man. Two, 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 two. two. Four hours, 58 minutes and 12 seconds was the headline, but two was the story. Two! This empty statistic paints a picture of Jericho as this legend, whilst also painting WWE as this deeply superficial entity that will sacrifice anything for a good story. Even a good story. But then we already knew that. Also, the two wrestlers Jericho eliminated, Sheamus and Cesaro who were squabbling amongst themselves when he chucked them out. What's even more worrying is that WWE is as fond of malice as it is of breaking meaningless records. And considering the fact that Jericho is now all in at AEW, expect runner-up Kane to do a full hour on January 27th, just to spite that ungrateful turncoat bastard. Number five, 12. In 1987, the WWE held the first experimental Royal Rumble match, but uh, we all experiment in our early years, right? This, of course, contradicts company law, which posits that the Royal Rumble match began in 1988 and has never looked back. Bollocks. You see, on October the 4th, 1987, the first prototype Royal Rumble emanated from St. Louis, Missouri. Featuring just 12 competitors, One Man Gang emerged victorious. And even he can't remember it. Just the 12 stars then. Still though, that's 10 more than we had in 1995's 30 Man, so not all bad news. Number four, four seconds. The 2015 Royal Rumble match was a disaster we can only really look back and laugh at now, thanks to Daniel Bryan's superb new reinvention as Vegan bastard, I'm gonna say. To underscore just how unbelievably awful it was when it actively tried to be awful, it couldn't even get that right. It hurts me to say this, but Titus O'Neil failed at failure. O'Neil entering in the number 26 slot was set to be eliminated instantly by Roman Reigns and Dean Ambrose in record time. Simple, right? No. No. However, O'Neill failed spectacularly to propel himself over the top rope, with both feet hitting the floor at the four second mark, preserving Santino Morella's 1.9 second record. Did Titus just break Santino Morella's record? Asked JBL optimistically on commentary. No, JBL. No, he didn't. Thankfully, though, this story does have a happy ending because Titus O'Neill managed to fulfill his boyhood dream of making a tit of himself at a Royal Rumble. <laughs> Number three, 11. Wrestle before CTE formally made us aware of the obvious, the I Quit match between The Rock and Mankind was a true video nasty that, while disturbing in the extreme, elevated its challenger to champion beyond the mere match result. An entertainment machine who serenaded the crowd whilst splitting his opponent's head open, this was The Rock, future hero of cinema in arch supervillain mode. Stop, stop, <laughs> he's already dead. The sheer oral horror of those shots never lose their impact and ghoulish appeal, frankly, two decades later. I mean, for God's sake, Jerry Law at one point on commentary shouts, goodbye brain cells. 10 is the number of chair shots thrown by The Rock in that infamous sequence, but he also used a chair to assist in a corporate elbow beforehand, which makes 11. Number two, a big fat zero. Zero is precisely the amount of Vince McMahon gave in 2014 and 2015. Look, he basically had a monopoly over the entirety of wrestling. He viewed that pasty vegan nerd Daniel Bryan with a simple <laughs> no and basically inducted every single one of the WWE universe into his kiss my ass club. Sorry. Oh, in addition, zero is also the amount of times Braun Strowman has worn the greatest Royal Rumble championship belt on WWE TV after the titular bout, 
wonder why that might be. Oh, and zero is also the amount of times any hometown star has emerged victorious from a Rumble match. Good, bad, great or greatest. In summary, here's what Vince McMahon thinks to who you reckon should win this year's Royal Rumble. And number one, 55.5%. Since 1993, the winner of the Royal Rumble match has been stipulated to challenge for the <laughs> WWF, WWE, World Heavyweight, ECW, <laughs> uh, Universal, Raw Women's or SmackDown Women's title at the grandest stage of them all in the main event of WrestleMania. Bollocks! We've seen 27 Rumble matches since this lasting stipulation took hold, but only 15 of the men and women to win at the Royal Rumble have gone on to close the show of shows. So, as a percentage, the winner of the Royal Rumble match only goes on to headline WrestleMania... 55.5% of the time. Maths. There is more or less a 50-50 chance of a headline match happening for the heavily rumoured likes of Seth Rollins, and Charlotte Flair, basically. Ultimately, per its own remit, the Royal Rumble match only really matters half the time. Enjoy Sunday, everyone. Bollocks.